Yum, yum! Hello everyone, Steve White here for Pixel Fondue. In this video I'd like to talk about working with layers in Substance Painter. So here I'm in Substance Painter and I have my object loaded in. I've already went ahead and baked out my maps here. Uh, I'm working at a 2K resolution and I'm using the PBR Metallic Roughness Workflow which by default will give us a base color, height, roughness, metallic, and normal channel. I only have one material applied to my object and you can see that up here in my texture set list and that's just called Crate. And then over here in the Layers panel uh, we can talk about the few different kinds of layers that we can add to our object. So first we have uh, what's known as a standard layer. This is just going to be a painting layer. Anytime you're going to be painting on your object, you know, using the particle brushes, things like that, you're going to be using a standard layer. Uh, next we have a fill layer, uh, which is just going to allow you to throw a material into your object um, and just have those applied, uh, you know, as opposed to painting them in yourself. So uh, let's go ahead and add a fill layer. And if we look down here at our material properties, you can see all those channels that make up the PBR shader here. And uh, these are all currently enabled by default. You can see the little blue lines beside each of these. Uh, you can go ahead and disable any of these channels that you don't want to use in this layer. Um, and that's going to remove their properties here below. So I'll go ahead and re-enable those. Uh, so now we can go in and adjust our parameters. So uh, for, for our base color, if I go ahead and set a color on there, it's going to fill our object in with that color. Uh, roughness, you know, if we set the solve to white, it's going to be very rough and dull. If we set it all the way down to black, now it's going to be very smooth and shiny. Same with metallic. Uh, currently, right now, it looks like a shiny plastic material. Uh, if we turn this all the way up to white, uh, now we're actually getting a metallic looking surface. Okay, so that is a regular fill layer. So now I'll go ahead and add a regular layer. And so uh, now if we hover over our object, you can see that we're getting a paintbrush icon. So now we can actually start painting on our object. So if I go ahead and you know draw a stroke on our object here, uh, you can see that we're getting a little bit of height information. Uh, we're getting that metallic and the smoothness and the color coming through. Uh, so you're, when you're working with a painting layer, um, if all of your channels are enabled, you're painting with all of those channels all at once. And again, we can uh, disable any of these channels that we don't want. So now if we just wanted to paint without the color, we could do that. And we can adjust our settings and then have those reflected. So right now our height is set to white, which is a positive value. Uh, so that's pushing up from the surface. If we turn this uh, down the, the opposite side, now we're actually cutting into our surface. All right, so that is a standard layer. So I'll go ahead and cut that. Okay, so now that we've seen the two different kinds of layers that we can add to our object, um, the one thing I, we should talk a little more about, uh, you know, the way we control our layers up here in the layers panel. So let me go ahead and add a layer again. We'll add a fill layer. I'll put in my paint here. Uh, we'll make this, uh, you know, shiny and metallic. Okay, so up here in the layers panel, uh, the one thing you should know is uh, these act similar to the way Photoshop layers work in the sense that uh, we have blending mode. So if you want to, you know, if you have layers below this and you wanted to blend this with another layer below, uh, you know, you have all, all the usual options and, and some different ones here we can use for that. Uh, you can also control the opacity. Now when you, uh, when you dial in this opacity, um, if I just dial this down, you can notice that you know the metal and the smoothness is still there but the color is fading. Well these are controlled up here in this little drop down uh, and the way you can control all these channels individually. So uh, let's go to the metallic and now if I start dialing this down now you can see the that metallic fades. Uh, so just a way to you know give you a little more control over how how materials are applied to your object. So let me go ahead and remove that. Uh, we need to talk about now how uh, we blend between different layers um, other than using a blending mode uh, and that way is masking. So let me go ahead and add a shiny iron material to my object and you can see that's filled in our object with this shiny material and uh, basically when you drag in a material you're adding a fill layer and you can see you cannot paint on this object. It'll tell you fill layers are not paintable. So uh, let's go ahead and add a rust on top of that. Okay so uh, you can see that uh, substance is a top-down sort of stack to where anything you put on the top is going to hide anything that you put below it on the layer stack. So uh, to blend, start blending between these materials, 
there's some different uh, options we can have. So uh, let me go ahead and right click on this and I'm going to add a black mask to my object. And that's going to completely cover up that rust that we just added. Uh, so now we need to go in and adjust our mask. Uh, right now it's just a black image that's sitting on top of our rust value. We need to add in some white to tell Substance where to sort of reveal that rust below. So I'll go in and right click on the mask and I'm going to come down here and add what's called a generator. And if we come over here to our properties and go to the generators tab here, I'm going to click on this and you can see that we have some different effects here that we can apply to our mask. So we have like a, a dirt, a dripping rust, a metal edge wear, um, you know, we can configure our own mask. So I'm just going to use a dripping rust for now. And you can see uh, if we come up here and hover over our mask, you can see what that's done to our mask. Um, it's added in these white values uh, based on this, on this, uh, you know, dri dripping rust generator. Uh, and you can see the effect that's having on our object. So now we can come in and adjust the uh, the generator property. So, you know, if we want more or less rust, we can dial that in. If we want the drips to be, uh, you know, a lot more intense, we can do that. Okay, so uh, that is just how masking works in Painter. Uh, let's say now I want to. Uh, I want to add another layer on top of that and uh, make this a painted object with that sort of rusty metal kind of being exposed below. So uh, what I can do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to add a fill layer to the top of my stack and I'm going to set a color. Okay, And then I will come in and I can adjust the roughness. Actually what we can do for the roughness, uh, if we click on this, um, it's going to go ahead and pull up our little mini library over here. And I've already done a search for grunge. Um, you can just type in anything you want here uh, and it will uh, sort of filter out the uh, results you're looking for. And I'm going to go down here and just choose a grunge map. And now that grunge is being applied to our roughness. So you can see we're getting a nice variation of roughness and you know smoothness across our object. So now that we have that, I'm going to expose that rusty metal below. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and add a black mask. And then I will right click on my mask and I'm going to uh, pull up another generator. So this time I'm going to come to my generator and I'm going to use a metal edge wear. Okay, now you can see that paint is being added um, along the edges and I actually want the opposite of that. I want the paint just to be worn off on the edges. So if we come over to our generator, I'm going to use the invert button and invert that. And so now you can see we're getting a, a nice metal edge wear around our object. Uh, but it's a little too consistent, I think. Um, you know, they're all just very evenly worn off. Uh, and we can go in and customize that. So what I'm going to do is right click on the mask again. And um, I'm going to add another effect. And I'm going to add a paint layer. So now we can actually come in and actually paint on our mask. Uh, so right now, if we come down here, uh, we're painting with white. So uh, basically that's going to... Oops, let me uh, do that. That's actually a particle brush. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, let me go to my brushes. I'm going to choose like a dirt and let me lower my brush size here. And now when we start painting, uh, we're actually painting white on the object and, and covering that up. Um, but I want to uh, turn this down to black and start exposing that metal below. So you can just sort of come in here and just sort of fine tune your mask and you know get exactly the effect uh, you're, you're after. Okay, so just another way to add a mask. Uh, you could also, if you wanted to, uh, let's say we just remove that, uh, you could come in here and just add a uh, fill layer, and now we can come in here and just add that same grunge, you know, maybe to uh, that, and now you can see that that's uh, just sort of using uh, that grunge map to determine where you know that is shown through. Now um, it looks a little soft like it's sort of semi-transparent. You can come over here and adjust the contrast and bring that up and so now you're getting more of a you know a harsh look. But I'm going to go ahead and remove that. Um, I liked what I had before. We'll just add that generator, metal edge wear, invert that you know and so we're back to where we were. So now what I want to do is, like, say this object's been sitting out in the sun and the rain, and, and so it's exposed to the elements, and, and it's got, uh, from the rain, it's been rusted, and, and rust is, you know, the water just drips down the sides. We can add a nice dripping rust effect. So I'm going to go ahead and come back to my materials, and we'll add a rust on top of that. Oops, and I need to actually pull it up to the top of the stack there. And again, I'm going to mask that out. 
and we're going to come in and this time I'm just going to add a paint layer. So I'm going to come back to my particle brushes and we're going to use this heavy leaks uh, brush. Um, all of these particle brushes just have different uh, physics properties over here uh, that you can adjust and uh, uh, you know and get different effects. So uh, let's go in and see what this does first. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make my brush size a little bigger. And say I want uh, this dripping rust to be leaking out from all underneath all these ridges. So what I can do is just come in here and just start painting across here, and those particles are just going to run down our surface and give us just a really nice leaking effect. And you can control the number of particles, you know, how, how much this spreads, you know, how fast these particles move. Um, you know, it's just one of the one of the real cool, really cool things about working with Substance Painter. So yeah, you get some nice effects like that. Okay, so uh, the one last thing I want to talk about in masking is uh, using the polygon fill tool. So uh, what you can do is, like, say you wanted to have a completely different material on this object, like, like, uh, say these ridges you wanted a different kind of metal or, you know, something else. So let me, uh, what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and add a folder, and we're going to name this folder. Uh, uh, we'll just call this ridges, maybe. And I'm going to take all those layers. I'm just going to right-click or uh, click on the top one, shift-click the bottom one, just to select all those layers. I'm just going to drag those into our ridges folder. So now you can see if we collapse that, uh, we have a folder structure in our layer stack. I'm going to go ahead and add a black mask to that whole structure. Okay, so now that is completely covering up, you know, all the layers that we had below. So up here in our toolbar, we have a tool called uh, Polygon Fill. And uh, basically we're gonna be adding to our, our, you know, the white to our mask uh, using uh, some different methods here. So if we come over here to Polygon Fill, we have some different methods. We have Triangle Fill, Polygon Fill, Mesh Fill, and UV Chunk Fill. So um, now Triangle Fill and Polygon Fill are gonna do the same thing here because this has all been triangulated. Uh, but if we do something like uh, UV chunk, and these are the top and bottom of our uh, item in our UV map. So if we click on this and click on this, it's basically going to take that island and mask them out. So now we're just exposing uh, the top and the bottom of that object. Uh, same thing here. We could come to uh, polygon fill maybe and just start clicking on these polygons. And we're basically going to be adding that you know, to our mask and mask those surfaces out. Uh, you can also uh, drag, click and drag in the viewport and that will just sort of uh, select all the faces you want to click. That'll just make things a little easier to do that. Uh, so now what we can do is we can actually come in and, you know, add another material to our object. And I'm actually going to drag this below our, you know, our so now you can see we have two different materials applied to our object. And again, we can come up here, say we didn't want this to be blue, we can come up to our mask again, still using that polygon fill tool, and just come in here and mask those out. Okay, well that wraps this up. I hope that was helpful. Uh, I just wanted to give an overview of how to start working with layers and blending in Substance Painter. Yum, yum!